for school girls, you know. I think that's what you just said. Uh, yeah, and then October. October October 16th is fall break. That and was, it's that, that's another? Yeah, it's well for St. Brain. It's that in service makeup for the teacher conferences. And then, yeah, the Thanksgiving fall break is the 20th. So both of those are. Yeah. Oh, no, I guess actually the 27th is the, what? the 20th is the third. Yeah, the, 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 so the, those are school. You know, does, it, does the city of Longmont observe that uh, Indigenous people stay on October 9th? Yes. I feel like that's a state holiday too, isn't it? Um, I think so. I, I can look for it. I don't know. I looked it up and it said it's a state holiday, but I didn't know how the, if that meant the city observed it. So, Right. Yeah, it, so we, so it's something like because we have a number of people in this room who have are associated with the school district that there is desire to move the October 16th meeting and possibly the November 20th. Is that what I'm possibly hearing? I think for me the November one is more problematic, but right. I'm not you. Oh. The October one is more problematic for me, but I can be home in time for it. All right. So we have to start settling down for the Tuesday beginning of the week anyway. <laughs> Anyone else see problems right now with November? I think it's just me. Okay, so my thought is to keep those then. Um, if we only have maybe one person out for each one, that, that will still have the board majority. Um, any anyone want to suggest otherwise? Otherwise, I think we should go ahead and keep the fall meeting schedule on the third Monday. And just unfortunately, you know, mm -hmm. Catherine will be out in November and possibly maybe in October. Yeah. yeah, makes sense. Is December the eighteenth okay for everybody? Is that that also is fine for me? I don't know. That keeps us in line the whole fall, which would be nice. That's fine for me, December. some other nods. All right, well, let's revisit as needed, but for right now, let's plan to keep all the fall meetings third week of uh, third Monday of the month, knowing that there's gonna be one or two with people missing. Okay, well, uh, let's go ahead and move on to old business. And John and Lily are gonna be turning these mainly over to you, but follow up from the cities first. So um, on August 8th, um city council um set the ballot for the library to be on a election in november uh, tomorrow night's meeting will be their resolution is it resolution susie what no that's not the right word i'm trying to unmute myself so <laughs> like you're too fast um so we are going to be hearing it on second reading right so that with the second reading, it is also um, public hearing. Right. So as we go through each item, so unlike the first, you know, under the first reading, we can choose to adopt all of it as a set package, um, you know, and pull each item for discussion as we need to, typically we don't. So the second reading, each item, so each ballot measure, we did separate it into three. The library is standing alone. The Y, um, the Y, Y field, and, um, the Centennial Pool, as well as the Rec Center is is one ballot initiative. And then the final one was the um, help me out here. The performing arts complex. The arts, yes, and that was the one where if they don't raise, if the um, nonprofit, the Performing Arts Coalition doesn't raise the 35 million, then we will not be collecting, within five years, then we will not be collecting a tax. So that was the one that kind of went on, on my, off my radar for a moment. But, uh, but yeah, so if anybody, or if you have, if you have in your own networks, somebody who's really passionate about coming in and speaking about the library or any one of the issues, um, encourage them to come for the public hearing on Tuesday. 
And, and Susie, just, final thought. Yes. To clarify, does that mean that the order that instead of a public invited to be heard at the beginning, that there'll be opportunities for the public to be heard throughout the meeting? Um, there'll be opportunity for public when that particular item is right. called on the agenda during the second um, ordinances on second reading. So when it passes, or if it passes, I should say if, um, if it passes, then from there, it, um, the city will move on to get it put on the ballot. Right. So this is the final one. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, in, in, in the packet, I think I had included the, the ballot language mm -hmm. that's been written so far so that you can read that um, and, and see, well, you can see it all, but certainly from the library, how, that, how that's being written. So um, one of the um, bigger things I wanted to share tonight, so we, um, a, a little, a few, I don't know, a month or two ago, I brought in an architect so they could do some architectural renderings um, to basically help with informational. So if, if someone were to consider a library, it'd be helpful to see some type of visual, what that might look like. And so I wanna share those with you tonight. They, they just sent me those today. Um, and so let me, oh, go ahead, Catherine. So yeah, just looking at the language, I noticed that it does not actually state that it would be increased to the preferred level of service. So um, Susie, can you speak to that? Why that language isn't in there or if there was an objection to that? Um, no, actually the, um, the city council did approve to support attaining the preferred level of service. I don't know why it would have unless it's something that's going to be incorporated in the sales tax or in our um, annual budget. But I know that on our last, when we did the first, we had had, and when we itemized it out into separate where we agreed to have it on the ballot, we agreed to have it separate from the rec center, and we are all agreed that we do need to, um, to do the, I'm oh, sorry, the preferred level of service. Okay, well, something happened between yeah, the yeah. and the ballot measure. You connect with Harold on that. I would really appreciate that because I feel like that's a huge issue. Yes. Yeah, Catherine, re reading the ballot language, I think the, I mean, it's, it's in there that there's an advantage library and and f funding and maintenance of all city libraries. Um, but I think we need to I hold them to that preferred level of service language because otherwise they can always move the bar. Yeah, so it sounds like from what Susie was saying that clarification from the city on, on that um, would be helpful and important. Yeah, especially if the record shows that city council already voted to approve that language. Okay. Uh, yes, the city council did approve to um, to finance to preferred level of service. I don't know, and let me um, you know connect with Harold to ensure that the ballot language does indicate that it will get us to that to that performance because as. Um, you know, as I'm looking, it does say, you know, the maintenance and improvement, but, you know, we want to make sure that it's, the bar is set higher than just the minimum. So let me double check with him and find out. Thanks, Susie. And, and I'm assuming that there's a pretty tight turnaround for any changes to the ballot language. Um, is that a fair assumption? Yes, but as council, we can amend. Oh, okay. So that just might mean the meeting will go a little later, but we'll amend if we need to. <laughs> Perfect. Great. Well, thank you for, for taking that to, to Harold. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I do know that the financial ask includes that. The, I saw the, some language in there yeah, that said it, was that well, that wasn't it wasn't in the ballot yes. itself. Yes. And I think that's what Catherine's speaking to. And 
underneath that are, are, is some other information. That mm -hmm. will be included in the city brochure that will be yes. sent out and some other materials. Um, and and that, that's, that's good in order to indicate, you know, I, I've actually raised a question to that point in a brochure of the language of preferred level of service is only meaningful if you know the feasibility study, in right. my opinion. Right. So it, it, I'm not sure in publications, about language aside, uh, it, it, if, we, if it's written and, and kind of put in these brochures or the city voting guide of preferred level of service out of context, I'm not sure if that makes sense, but that's just my thought, I think explaining what that means. I mean, in my mind, it's getting the library funding up to a level that can support a, a population of 100,000, not 65,000. That, that, to me, that's really what this is about. So, um, but it's a good point that Catherine makes. I don't know that the ballot language itself is real clear about that, but I know the financials are there. Right. There's the, the property tax for the building, and there's a the sales tax for operations of both the new library and an increased funding to our current budget. It's, the math is there. Right, right. So what's missing is really that explicit link between the, the numbers that we're asking voters to support mm -hmm. on the ballot and what those numbers get us. Correct. I agree with you. I think that um, preferred level of service as a phrase is a little jargony. Um, it right. makes it sound like this is above and beyond preferred. You know, it's not like this is what's required for a population. Like you said, this is this is the kind of the, the standard level of service of a population of this size. Right. Um, I don't know. Preferred. Yeah. It's an interesting point that without knowing what is in the feasibility study. Yeah, I think that, outside of the feasibility study, I mean, you, you could argue it, it sounds kind of like a luxury yes, or, or it's greedy. It's like, well, no, that's not really problem. what it is. It's, it's responding to the study that clearly shows that this library is under, underfunded for the city of this size. And, and somehow that's what I think needs to get communicated. You can say preferred, but explain it then. <laughs> Yeah, so there seems just to, to kind of sum up, uh, it seems like there's really two different questions we're talking about. One is the public communications. Does this language make sense? And in, in, in our, and the views expressed so far, it does not. But to Catherine's point, you know, it also needs to. Recording in progress. Uh, Recording stopped. <laughs> oh, you're fine. Uh, what, what needs to be in the ballot um, versus kind of what needs to be in these public communications? Mm -hmm. Correct. So I think I agree that it makes a lot of sense not to use that language in some of the promotional or informational materials. But Catherine, it looks like you had raised your hand. Well, I'm sorry I missed part of that discussion, but I was on like three percent, so I didn't want to risk it. Um, but yeah, I think my only the relevance of that language to me is sort of a con continuity in terms of like the conversation with city council in the city and being able to point to statistics and figures that were developed, you know, so that it's potentially perceived as like less biased, I think. Um, and yeah, there's just an accountability piece there that I agree. I can see how it might have connotations of grandeur, but um, I, yeah. I, I guess I just worry me more personally about making sure that the powers that be uphold that expectation and that the language holds them to that expectation if it were to pass. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And hopefully, Susie, that's a um, helpful discussion uh, for you. Um, it, it seems like in terms of the ballot. Thank you, Susie, for, for making sure um, those concerns are brought forward. And then, um, otherwise, I'm wondering kind of this board's place at this point in this discussion. Um, I don't know if we really, now that this has moved on to the second reading, I'm not quite sure that we have a, a place in this discussion um, beyond the types of conversations we just had. Um, but I, basically, what I'm saying is, I don't think any. Is, I, 
the question I'm raising is, do we need to take action um, for, for any part of this right now? Um, and, I, and I'm not seeing a place where we would necessarily. And I know some of that are hands are tied a little bit legally at this point. Hands are tied legally, right? Because yeah. we're in that boat now. Yep, it's fixed. Of not, you know, yeah. campaigning, um, same with me. But um, one of the things that is allowed, and, and this would be a good time for me to start sharing my screen, actually. Um, I'll, I'll share the renderings in a second, but, um, you know, you might remember this was shared with <laughs> Basically, you know, everything goes. We're, so we're in the vampire rules mode right now. But re remember that you a board can always pass a resolution of an official expression. Mm -hmm. So that that's the one thing that that could happen if the board desired to to go before council and pass a resolution of some sort. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's tomorrow night. But I'm just saying, those are within the rules. There's also the, the blood mistakes part that I've been thinking about. So like, there's this question, like my marketing brain thinks like, all right, we need uh, an information, the library, this initiative, I won't say wait, the initiative needs a, an educational, informational campaign for the public. And where does that sit? Whose role is that to do that, not even in an, in an advocacy way, but just to put it into layman's terms. Um, like uh, the document that you shared with us had blank spaces for those, those in favor believe this and those who oppose believe that, but that's really important stuff to know and think about and be talking about in our communities prior to this election. So the city will produce that. They okay. will produce a voter guide. With all the other stuff. That has, yes. It, it'll have, like, if you vote yes, this is what it means for every issue. Well, it's like the blue book, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the city level one. one. Yeah. 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 Right. So I guess part of me would just like to see something additional that yep. is just library so, focused. So the, oh, just library focused. Yeah. Okay. Well, the other thing that the city will do is they will. Communications will create a, a like a, a more brochure mm -hmm. that's not so much. I mean, it's informational in, in a similar way, but it's not as formal, I guess, like or is is formal as the mm -hmm. blue book, right? And so, what can go in there are some other pieces of information, including the renderings. Mm -hmm. So, so let me let me show you. Yeah. Um, uh, we, my team and I have had. Uh, a number of meetings with an architect that uh, is, is very well known in Colorado Library Land. They're called Studio Trope. And um, so we worked with them and had a bunch of discussions to come up with some renderings of, you know, and, and their idea of rendering. Is this here? Let's see. Yeah, okay. So we. We worked with them, talked about you know all our kind of values and, and everything that we want to see in a, in a library of potential or we think the community more so could benefit from a new library. So these renderings are visionary in nature, right? What you're, you're not seeing is an actual building that you're going to get necessarily. It's more like what, what happens within a library, a new library for long haul. So I'll show you these three renderings they came up with. So um, the, this first one you see, and like everyone on the screen can see that, I'm sure. Or you were tell me no. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, so the, the first one of these is, is basically the overall concept of this and what, what this space we named is like an innovation or creation type of space, right? And you can kind of get that from looking at this thing. So we have our library of things back here. So we wanted to represent aspects that we currently have that are very popular that would carry forward in any new location that we would be fortunate enough to get. Um, that people are here looking at all the different things that we have. Um, you have a couple of, of kids up here uh, playing with new technology. Um, and sort of this create space back here. Think of this as like a, 
a maker space. And, and the idea is to visualize this not necessarily as one room, right? That That's what I think their goal is, is like, we're trying to represent a number of things in this maybe an area of the library that might expand beyond a room. So even though you see library things here and a maker space here, it doesn't mean they're actually there, right? It's just the idea is to show you what, what could be. Um, and then, you know, we're still a library, we're, we're still about books. So this is showing, you know, books here in a book display. Um, this side is showing there's a, a bike repair demo going on, so like an on the flight demo. Um, these people are, are, are sitting on, you know, kind of some steps and they're, they're looking at the demo from there, right? And then you kind of see there's an upper level here, some classroom space and things like that. Um, kids playing here and then, you know, some great, when we talked about the library, one of the things I said is, well, we need lots of light, windows, panoramic now, whether the space we have is going to provide that, we'll, we'll see, but I want to show that because I think anywhere in Long Island that you can have, you can still get some view of something, right? So um, so that's the, the, the first rendering. Um, the second rendering is um, what this is showing is our, our children's space kind of in the background here. Um, so you have some children's activities here. Um, it might, I don't know how small this is showing for anybody else, but these are actually very large, by the way. Um, and these are meant, the, the size of these are meant to be printed like on poster size. So if we can do informational things in our lobby here, this can be included. Um, this is a, representing a sensory table, so like, you know, that kind of thing here for kids. Um, and then just just some open space, people playing games, just interacting, a teen space in the background playing games, you know, and then a drop-in learning area where a class is going on. So again, not necessarily in one space, but you know, showing you, and this is what we called um, I think the learn area, right? I think is what we called it. I can't remember. But um, so that's what that rendering was trying to show. We had also asked again for, um, you know, different textures, color. You see in the background. Um, I'm I'm big on color, so I was pushing for a lot of color. Um, you know, things like that. So, and then the third rendering um, that I created is an outdoor space, and this is the one. At least for me, I had the most fun with because um, I thought this was important to have and a big deal in Colorado. Right, outdoor space, but also connected to the library. And so um, there's a lot really going on in here if you look at it. So yeah, there's a patio, there, there's people sitting, doing various things. There's a little story time going on over here outside. You have a canopy, people hanging out. You can see a, a person back here on a bicycle, so presumably maybe there's a, a path that's going around the library here. In the back here, you have a mural that is a create space. So they're actually working on this right now. It's a type of mural that's meant to be temporary. So it can come down and then something else happens. Um, people up above looking down and this is a fire pit. I left our risk management personnel out of this meeting. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I don't know we actually would have a fire pit here. I could see like an outdoor fireplace, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, it, in a wall that's you know safe. But at the same time, I want that feel of something where people can enjoy being outside, even if it's not like mm -hmm. a hot summer night. Mm -hmm. Even though this is sort of representing comfortable weather. Right? So those are the three renderings they created for us um, that are received today, and uh, they they should be included in any of those brochures and any informational materials that we have, which I think um, will help. I think people need a visual of something, you know, to kind of, the, the, the overall idea of these is, is creating something that people can see themselves in. Yes. Um, and that, that's really what we were going for with these. 
and um, at, at following the meeting, I can certainly send these out. I didn't have them in time, obviously, to put them in the packet. I'm sure you'd probably like to look at them further and beyond these few minutes. Thanks, John. I, and if I there's any questions or you want me to go back to any of the images, I can. I think these look great. I love how flexible these spaces are designed to be, too. And that was key. That's so important. I mean, it looks like you had wanted to jump in. Oh, yeah, I feel like I must have missed this somewhere, but is this a renovation of the existing library or is this a virtual branch library? So this is representing, well, it, it's more representing a new branch, a new construction. But it, I, I wouldn't necessarily tie yourself to that. I mean, the that's what they went, that's what the architect went from. So we're building a new branch that potentially would go here. It didn't really matter where it was, but it was a new construction. So they went from that to kind of have some leverage to create, you know, some of what you see here that, yeah, this isn't probably, this is not a renovation, certainly from this library. This isn't a, a new branch. John, you may go back to the second rendering. One thing I, I really, I mean, I love all of these, but I, I love this one because I think that people still so strongly associate libraries with print books, and I think that rendering out of all three really sh shows that as well, which yeah. I think is persuasive. It was it was very intentional yeah. to have that, and in fact, I'll come back here. But the first rendering, initially, it was it had no books in yeah. it, and I was like. We, we kind of talked, I said, we, we need to have some books. Yeah. I mean, it's still, if we're wanting people to see themselves in a library, it can't be all outdoor and very creative spaces. That's, that does not appeal to anybody. Right. It'll appeal to a lot. People still, um, you know, they associate libraries with books. It's a, it's a fact. I mean, that's still our core. Yeah. So um, we made sure even in this space to have books here. And actually, up here, where this person is standing and teaching, I mean, this very faint back here is supposed to resemble books as well. You know, like a wall of books. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a little more, much more subtle there than here. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I agree that was something that we were pretty thoughtful about. Yeah, it comes through with that thoughtfulness. That was actually my favorite rendering. Was the first one because I, I thought most immediately conveys the various types of exchanges that happen in a library. That it has the books, it has the objects and technology, it has the interaction between humans. Um, yeah, I, don't know. I thought it really nice and inclusive and all the natural light elements that they I mean, I'm really glad you're seeing all these things because these are all the things we talked about in this process. So this is just partly my ignorance of, of how this works. Um, so we're, so the city puts forth the Blue Book language, but then am I understanding correctly that they also put forth other communications that would include these as informational communications that would include these renderings? They, they will create like a brochure, it's more, I mean, it's really more of a marketing material to encourage people to go out and vote. Mm -hmm. So that's different in the sense that we can include images like this and, and some other aspects that wouldn't necessarily be in, in, a, in a Blue Book voter guide. Mm -hmm. It'll still be information, it'll mm -hmm. still have yeah. some of those pieces, but that's the advantage is you can do things like this. The rec center, also has rendering, so mm -hmm. I imagine that will be in that same brochure. Yeah. Um, so I, it, it, we're kind of jumping between sub A and sub point B yeah. under this agenda yeah, item, kind of <laughs> uh, which is just fine. But I guess my question is after hearing this still, is, is there a role for this board within this process, and it sounds like at this point, um, not necessarily. But thanks, Susie, I know you have your hand up and had a comment in the chat. Oh, 
Okay, thank you. Um, you know, I just, John, and this question is more for you. Tomorrow when we, so during ordinances on second reading, at times we do have somebody from staff presenting. Are these slides going to be presented to us? tomorrow night. I didn't see it in the packet where there was opportunity for that. I I don't know. I was, I'll certainly be there and we'll be prepared to okay. and I'll talk to Jeff about that. I wasn't given oh. any direction in that. Okay. And partially because I wasn't presenting these to the board until tonight. Okay. And you know, because I'm wondering if that would allow, you know, since the press is there, we have one more leader, time's called you know, opportunities to get this out to the public. Um, and especially since our hands are kind of tied, we could really use that opportunity during council, a public meeting to say, hey, you know, this is what we're envisioning with this, um, with this ballot initiative. And, you know, to have that opportunity for the public to be able to see this without us really going into, you know, I know the vampire laws and then he kind of crossing the line on that respect, in that regard. So using, um, you know, this public opportunity to be able to share what what could be if we voted yes on this on this ballot initiative. Yeah, I, I mean, I would welcome the opportunity to do that. So okay. I, I, I'll, I'll ask internally how, how that works. Yeah. Uh, if, if I have, yeah, and I, I think in any one of the, the ballot initiatives, you know, I think that's a that's a great opportunity to be able to share. So, um, I agree. Yeah. yeah, you know, let me know if you feel like okay, maybe Susie, um, you know, can you send an email as well? You know, I can do that. I'd be happy to. Okay, thank you. Sure. Thanks, Susie. That seems like a very strong suggestion. Anything else that you have in terms of this agenda item? No, those those are the two. You know, we talked, we kind of did intertwine, but I, the language and then these were the main goals here to share today. Well, I'm I'm really excited to to see this on there and um, as as a separate ballot item. Uh, any other board comments on this agenda item? Well, let's go ahead and move forward then. Um, and one last thing, actually. John, thank you for the summary of um, the last city council meeting that you sent us afterwards. That was nice. Oh, um, sure. For that update, it was nice to hear. All right, well, let's go ahead and move on to action plan update. So I'll, I'll stay on here. Um, So I, um, I, I think at the last meeting, I shared our dashboard of the action plan that, um, that we created kind of close to the end of the year, but not quite. So this is to show kind of where we're at. I actually changed this again into a, a, a new platform because I realized the one I had, which was a free version, didn't give me enough flexibility. So, um, so I, I switched it up again. So now I have, something I can work with a little bit better. It gives you, or it, and me, us, everybody, a little bit, I think, a better view of where we are at with certain things. Um, I'm not gonna talk through everything, but I, I wanna address some things that either have been updated or some kind of status of where we are with our action plan. Um, so one of them is, um, and I don't remember if it's, where it is in the status, but actually let me get the table because I know where it is. It's here. So in patron and staff security, we have um, the security cameras. Um, so just an update on that. They were installing some of these cameras again just last week and testing some people. So I feel like this project is very near um, where we can test those new cameras and some updated views that we could ask for as a part of this project. So um, a little bit more of a status on that. Um, and then I am 
jump back to the board here. We can, um, I, I created a new status of on hold <laughs> because there's there's things that I'm I'm waiting on answers for. Um, so they're not necessarily in progress. Um, the access to the staff areas, which will be badged access to that, as well as a staff elevator. Um, still waiting on quotes. They have to replace the double doors that go into the admin area in order to do this. And they have to also tell me that the staff elevator is capable of being badged, mm. which they think it is, but mm. I haven't heard back. So it's kind of on hold in that sense. Mm. Um, the uh, EDI training for staff, um, somewhat on hold in the sense that um, the leadership team will be meeting with um, members of the equity team and the city manager and the assistant city manager later in September. And that's supposed to be more or less a kickoff into future trainings with all library staff on equity, diversity, and inclusion, which is something we wanted to do all year. So, um, so it's on hold in that sense. But once we get to that meeting, I think that we'll see what, what is coming up. Whether we'll complete that in the year, we'll see. But if we get started, we get started, right? So um, the shelving project in children and teen, um, uh, I found and hired a consultant um, to help with that. They came and met with myself and my head of children's and talked about some ideas and things we want to do there. Basically, we have very little shelving in children's. It needs to be replaced. It's been on our project for the last few years to do. Um, so we're going to basically clear out all the shelving and get new shelving. Um, big project. Okay. Yeah. And hopefully we'll open up some space. And we're also hoping to make it somewhat flexible by putting some or all of this new shelving on casters so we can be a little more mobile of how we use our children's space. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back on the consultants on that. I agreed on their proposal. I imagine what's going on now is they're looking at vendors and different shelving components that they want to propose that. Um, the weeding of uh, juvenile nonfiction, which is a, a big component to the shelving project because it's going to allow us to get basically rid of a lot of old materials that are just taking up space. Um, the person that was in charge of that is retiring. Her last day is the end of next week this week actually um, so we're transferring that to somebody else so I kind of put it on a hold in the moment I mean it still has to get done obviously but um, I'm not sure what, where who's going to take that on in her absence um, and then um, the school district this has been going on before I got here of trying to have student IDs function as library cards um, I've done this before in previous jobs it's always a challenge more so from the school district side because there's so many student privacy things that we have to work with. Um, also just capacity of people in school districts. We have teams of people, we, we're in Marmot, so we have an entire second IT staff to help with the technology behind it, and, um, that, which is true that I'm finding here, which has been true everywhere else I've been in the school district, doesn't have the same. <laughs> level of, of that. So people have, are overwhelmed and have too many things to do and it's hard to um, find time to devote to how can we share data but anonymize it and make sure that they can have IDs. They've done some testing before and worked so we're just kind of waiting on some school district people to get back to us on some other schools that we can test with. Um, and then um, the meeting rooms, the big meeting rooms, we will open up to the public in September, sometime probably within the, by the middle of September. Uh, Tracy and I, uh, mostly Tracy, um, have been uh, solidifying the policy behind the meeting rooms. We, we you know, you know I, I think as many know, they were available to the public a number of years ago, and then. Obviously, COVID will shut everything down, but when we open back up here, the meeting room wasn't open back up. Um, largely because our own program took over. So we have plenty of hours in the day where it can be open, so we're just, we're just finalizing that policy, and we'll have that back open to the public in September. And we've been asked about it a lot. Do you just, I didn't realize it wasn't back open. Do you just kind of look at what the other city buildings 
do as a kind of a, a guidance? Uh, or more different? so other public library policies regarding new rules. Gotcha. Not so much within the city. Yeah. And we had a policy before, it's just that it was outdated. Mm -hmm. And we also have technology behind it that helps us manage it much better. Before it was all like pen and paper right. bookings. Mm -hmm. So we're in a much better spot. That technology we use already for our study rooms and for this room that we have been um, making available to the public, what, since April? Yeah. Except for when we had this area shut yeah. down. But anyway, yeah. different, different topic. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, we're looking forward to that and getting that back out to the public. I think it's a, a service we, we need to do. So, um, computer classes, which is on here somewhere, I think, I don't know if I have it as completed or still in progress, but that was one of our goals this year was to start to having various computer and technology classes for the public. We started those in July. We do two a month, the second and fourth Tuesdays. Um, the first two that we have had have had an attendance of um, 12 or above, which is good. The lab only holds 20. So good turnout so far. Um, so we'll, we'll keep doing those. We're talking with um, another outside agency to collaborate and they would come in and teach some of these technology classes in Spanish. We always have someone on staff in Spanish for our own classes, but these would be specifically for Spanish speaking classes. I think that's how it works. No, it's somebody else. Um, and then the last thing, which is also on here in progress, so we wanted to do a library history exhibit here, like a timeline, and um, so we met uh, one of my staff members who works in reference in, in library school, she focused on archives, so she has a little bit of knowledge of this, plus we're working closely with the museum, of course. And we just met with them last week to talk about, we'll probably do it here on the first floor. It would be a wall display. It's mostly photos and some clippings, but to kind of give from beginning to current of the library. And they asked me when I would want it done. I said, well, you know, before November 7th would be awesome. <laughs> you could, that was going to be my question. Future with the exactly renderings. right. We'll yes. have we'll have the exhibit in past, the, present, future. What now? I mean, yeah. it's, like, <laughs> it's all there. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll see what we can do. You know, some of that has dependencies on ordering materials and things, but the museum staff's committed, and cool. um, I don't think it's a huge exhibit. You know, considering the kind of things they do in the museum, this is not overwhelming. I don't think for them. So those are my updates. Huh. On the action plan. Thanks, Jen. I, I'm so glad that the timing of that exhibit uh, might work I out. I hope, yeah. I think it'd be so <laughs> nice to talk about this building and context of the population size for the bill. Um, I, I guess I have two other questions, and I'm sure others do as well. Um, and one I just forgot. Uh, this is my point of curiosity, and, and probably just shows my ignorance of public libraries, but do you all have a separate, is there a collection development department or team, or do, do individual librarians within adult services or children's services do the collection development? In, in this library, that's how it's set okay. up. So there are selectors within the adult services team, there are selectors within the children and teen team, um, and they do their own ordering, so there's not a collection development department per se. Um, we'll see how that looks in the future. If we have a multi-branch system, you know, it, it might make more sense to centralize that in a way um, than we do now where it's controlled by each department, but that's a ways off. <laughs> and my other question, which I did remember, is uh, would you mind sharing the meeting room policy with this group? I think it could be nice for us to know. Yep. Um, and I guess along with that is a request, and I'm sure these are somewhere front facing as well. Uh, if you want to mind sharing the collection development and display policy, I think it could just be nice for us to have that full picture. Yep. So the the collection um, development 
policy and the display program policy are both on the website. Okay. Those are the only two we have that are publicly available okay. enrollment, which is not intentional. It's mm -hmm. just those are the ones that we've had ready. Um, the reading room policy um, will be up there once we have it ready, but we can share it with the board before that. Yeah, once it's finalized, yeah. we can share it. But and it's it, very similar to what's on the website right now with the conference room yeah. policy. It's just right. going to be a little bit yeah. different for the other room. It's just well. some differences because yeah. it's bigger and has a kitchen and basically, and technology. Um, we also, it's in the action plan too, but there's there's a team that's working on finalizing a computer use policy, which mm -hmm. we also are lacking here, and that will also be publicly available once it's built. Other questions or comments regarding the action plan? Where are policies on the website, just so I can look at them later? What, you're having trouble navigating the website? <laughs> Sorry. I used a lot of, <laughs> a lot of tasks. <laughs> it's, it's in the um, About Us, which is at the top. Mm -hmm. About the library, very top. Oh, you're there? Yeah. Just scroll down. Okay. Keep going. Um, there's the collection development policy and the display. Oh, okay. Policy. Okay, perfect. Okay. And, and there is also in the action plan, in case you're still catching up on as a new member, um, we are, our, our communication, we have mostly a dedicated person for marketing communications for the library, about 90% of the okay. time is for us. She's not completely redesigning the website, but making a lot of improvements, yeah. and there's some things that are to help with navigation that I think will go a long way. Awesome. Yeah. All right, other comments or questions? Great. Well, thanks, Sean, for that update. I think that's really helpful for us to get the idea of the scope of what you all are working on. Yeah. Um, let's move on then to uh, reports and information items and hand it back to you. Put like a fake mustache or something on. Change the mustache. Get a Um. So I, I don't have much that specifically the to the director report, but I did want to tell you, if you didn't see it, depending on where you came in tonight, for those of you that are here, um, our new ex outside book drop yes. arrived today. Oh, it's all wrapped up. It's, yes, mm -hmm. on purpose. Beautiful present. So we, this library for a number of years has wanted a book drop on the outside, on the west side of the library. We have five on the east side and zero on the west side, which is sort of like the grand entrance, right? It's the plaza. I don't know who's going to be back so, entrance, and there they are. Yeah. So we finally have it. Um, I am hopeful that the facilities team uh, will have time tomorrow to unpack that and, and install it. You know, it gets mounted into the. Is it going to be where it's sitting yep, now? Yeah, it's where right there. That was the one spot I was allowed to have. Oh. You didn't have free reign. No, no. Okay. No. Um, it's limited, right? I mean, I didn't know this until I asked the question. Mm -hmm. But a, a lot of the plaza, at a certain point, you can tell by the texture of it, that part has heated coils underneath. Mm. Oh, I never noticed. And so in the winter, if you have not noticed on that side, and there's other areas in the city, at the Civic Center that have the same thing, so that oh, wow. it, it keeps it dry to a certain point. Right. So we can't drill into that. Right. Ideally, it would have been up there closer to the doorway, particularly for staff. The other thought was to have it more on street side so that people could do drop right. We have that on the east side, um, but it was not going to work here um, on this side. There were, there were too many complications. So then we started looking where on the plaza could go, and it was pretty much right there by the pipe racks. It's, it's still not a bad location for it, and having something there is better than nothing. So, the director update, that's my biggest thing. Huh. I guess the only question I have is just the action plan just made me realize we haven't checked in in a while. Any uh, security issues or, or any support that this board can provide in terms of communicating the need for anything security related? 
I don't think so. Right. Um, we, yeah, there's really uh, nothing beyond what the board's already done, which is certainly supported the need for secure errands for staff and getting behind us on that. So that's, I mean, that carries a lot. I agree. I think that's always incredibly important. So we yeah. try to every few months ask me about that. Yeah. Huh. Okay, great. Any other questions, comments for John? Well, let's let's move on. Friends of the Library liaison. Again, it's like the timing of the meetings uh, are are off. So I feel like I'm always in one of the meetings where I feel like I. My information is old from the library meeting. But I know that the friends are, um, they're completely gearing up for the September book sale, starts September 20th, um, in the process of getting flyers printed and distributed in various places. They ordered new um, reusable bags that will be exclusively available for the book sale so that we don't have to and you know I don't know is it five dollars for this size bag five dollars for this size bag you know mm -hmm. so it's just one bag you pay five dollars it's branded with friends logo on it and um, you fill it up uh, beyond that they're also really kind of waiting to hear from um, John or you know what they can do to support um, the ballot initiative and that's tricky they're a 501c3 there are certain restrictions to to their ability to get involved with advocating or lobbying for uh, legislation but um, we're kind of i'm trying to help them sift through some of the jargon and um, legalese that's out there um, because i i sense that ultimately what they want to do is talk to people they mm -hmm. want to write something Paper. They want to give public commentary. They want to ed sit in the lobby and educate people. You know, ask me about you know what a new library branch could be like or something like that. And there's just all of this language about having to do with fundraising and this you know things that I just don't think this group is really going to get into. So we're trying to figure out how can we, in a nonpartisan way, just equip. The public, or at least our, the, the friends of our members, with information, mm -hmm. and kind of just start to drum up some excitement mm -hmm. around the future of the library, whatever that means. It, you know, it's just timed with the election and the ballot initiative. You know, people can make the decisions that they need to make, but um, to have that potential be front and center in people's minds that same time would be um, something I think that the friends would ask. That sounds, that sounds nice. Uh, do you think that the council meeting tomorrow would be of interest to that group? Um, I can put the call out. I feel really guilty that this would now be like the third time that I was saying, like, hey, who's around tomorrow night <laughs> to that come and give a heartfelt testimonial? <clears throat> Supporting the library, but and, and that might not. It, that, that really was a genuine question, uh, rather than a suggestion, because I'm not sure if, if that would be right of interest or not um, to that group. It would be, and I don't know how many people would be available, but right. I know that the intention is there, and right. um, I'd love to give a little bit more lead time and maybe yeah. you know, talk, talk about talking. But maybe we'll do a little bit of that on Wednesday night. Yeah. That's when the next friends meeting is, and it is on the agenda to discuss, you know, what can we do? Who can we talk to? You know, yeah. Um, how far in advance are they planning their process? Um, months and months. There is a concerted effort to get even better. And, and plan them out even a year. So I believe that what will probably happen is for 2024, they will decide on those dates 
they, they're striving to be that, to decide well, on all Because what days. I was going to suggest, and I don't know if we are looking to like kind of expand who knows about the book sales. Yeah. But if they are looking for expansion, you have to plan it pretty far in advance, but the Go catalog certainly, well, not Wheels on Wheels puts out a monthly newsletter. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of like client oriented newsletters amongst nonprofits. But then also yes. the Go catalog, the deadlines for the Go catalog are ridiculously far in advance, though. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's an aspiration. That's right. something to strive for. Um, I saw at the last sale, I saw a bookmark that the friends had made that had the rest of the sale dates on it for the year. Yeah. And that was like, that felt like progress. That was different. Um, and then you know they're they're trying to reanimate their social media presence. It's something I'm helping them with, and even getting those events on Facebook mm -hmm. months in advance because I I know that that's a, a question that the friends get constantly is when's the next sale? Oh, I'm not going to be in town for this one. When's the next sale? Right. right. So to have that cycle because they're the, they're seasonal. And they don't do currently do one in the summer, so there's a fall, a winter, and a spring, and it's about the same time. So you can look at a calendar and say, "All right, barring an act of God, this is going to be the day. <laughs> Let's just slap it on a right. flyer and put it out there because it's not just the go catalog; it's you know, reckoning with people and carry it and the rules of the back catalog." Yeah, I mean, three months out is about like the the cutoff for a lot of print publications you know even like the boulder area or longmont magazine or right. any of those calendars that will appear in print um so 2024 i think cool. hopefully that's cool to do that and let them in on post-pandemic expansion okay well yeah but right now word of mouth is the number one best, most effective tool for those sales. I mean, among educators, among um, booksellers, uh, yeah, all kinds of people come out for those sales and they look forward to the next one. So, so I guess uh, uh, two comments, and I'm sure that this is already planned, but I, I imagine the friends would also appreciate seeing the renderings. And also thank you, Jamie, for jumping in wholeheartedly into this role as uh, a new board member and the current liaison. Just much appreciated. Uh, other questions or comments for Jamie? Okay, let's move on. Uh, Susie, City Council, uh, updates. Well, yeah, I. Um, I was going to bring up that we're hearing the ballot initiatives uh, on second reading, so I've, I already spoke to that. Um, yeah, so even if it's, you know, if you all can't attend, if there's other people in your networks who are passionate about this, you know, definitely have them come and, and speak or, or show their support. Um, you know, and, and going back, I think Jamie was, um, the opportunity for friends to to get involved, they could possibly write letters to the editor. Yes. Or if the Times call, the um, TC line in the mm -hmm. Times call. Um, I know it's shorter, but then they don't have to necessarily put their name to it you know, oh, if they wow. wanted to go to that to the TC line. I I, I don't know how many um, words it it permits, but it's a lot shorter than your than your regular op eds. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring to your attention was, um, is that in September the 15th, uh, it's a Friday, from 10 to 11, the museum is launching their capital campaign for their expansion. Um, one of the things that we did to kind of concise um, the ballot initiatives, uh, you know, in hope of, of having success in them passing was to kind of move the museum piece off of it and they, the um, board moved forward in uh, supporting a capital campaign. So one of the things that, you know, I, I thought is as a community, we can rally and support um, the museum on, on that effort. 
So, um, and that, so that kickoff will be at the museum courtyard from 10 to 11. Um, but definitely keep an eye on the, on the website and let, let folks know that they can donate to, to that as, as well. And one of the things, so last Thursday, I am um, the liaison to the um, Neighborhood Groups Leadership Association, the NGLA, and one, something that's come, come up, I've received a lot of emails and concerns about, was the um, underpass under Boston Bridge. So as you know, the flood recovery, this September will be 10 years. <laughs> um, there, you know, we, we were acquiring federal federal monies for the um, RSVP, so the Resilient St. Brain Project um, through the um, <coughs> Army, I think it was Army Corps, so let me look that up. Uh, so yeah, so the United States Army Corps of Engineers acquiring that federal funding, there was a lot of delays, but they've, um, they've started doing um, renovations under the bridge so that trailway is close to pedestrians and cyclists. So that's over by Left Hand Brewery um, near, I think it's Rogers Grove. So, um, and that is expected to not be completed until the summer of 2025. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, I've been in contact with um, Bill Greenwald from Transportation and Jim Engstead from um, Public Works, um, you know, trying to f make sure that we get alternate routes and detours for pedestrians and people who are dependent on, on bicycles as a um, primary source of, of transportation. So re really making sure that we, we have that out to the public. So something, you know, you, you can, you know, spread, help spread the word on is if they can even look up on the website, just search um, Boston Avenue Bridge replacement, and it'll have the details on there as well as um, um, detour routes. So that might be, it's not really library related, but it is um, pertinent information in our community. So, so I wanted to get that out there. And I don't know if you had any questions for me. Yes. That's crazy because that other section of the bike path has been closed for years and years too. Yes. So a lot of it we're dependent on, and what I was learning is federal federal funding, um, getting that those funds allocated, and then doing the you know meeting, meeting those timelines for contracting individuals. Like there were a lot of moving parts and trying to get it all coincide together. Um, yeah, and we, we had last, was it last year or the year before, we had passed the, um, the expansion so that RSVP to expand beyond um, Hover to um, sort of that, for that to be done. And it's just, it's taken a lot longer than what we, what we had wanted and anticipated it to be, so. Yeah. Well, thanks, Susie. Sure, that's all I have. It's very short. Uh, questions or, or comments for Susie? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, moving on, our, our next agenda item is library profession news. And, and Katie, is somebody who's new to this meeting, this is a standing agenda item that it's just uh, John, of course, but the rest of us in different capacities pay attention to the greater library world. Uh, so if anyone is read anything interesting or has any updates, uh, now would be the time to share. I, I don't have anything new. Uh, there's been a few somewhat sad uh, news items related to uh, the public library being fired in Wyoming. Um, some schools in Texas taking libraries out of it, and Houston taking libraries out of that school district. Um, and so the, actually the library in Wyoming made me think that it was probably good for this board to, to understand our collection development policies, like uh, display policies and so on. Um, but otherwise, I don't have any large news items on that one. I don't know if you have any that you've read. You know, one thing maybe that if you're not aware, the board should be aware. Um, the the new um, American Library Association president, and that's, that change is new. Yeah. Um, the person that was elected last year, now they took office in July, and um, the person uh, once the term started, well, actually it was last year, I think, on their own personal Twitter account, were celebrating the fact that they were elected ALA president and they made the statement of, um, 
how wonderful it is, and this is not so much of a direct quote, but you get the idea. How, how wonderful it is that an LGBTQ plus Marxist is now president of ALA. And um, this, is get, this has been getting a lot of attention. Um, I, I haven't seen too much in Colorado, but I can tell you like the state of Montana basically withdrew their association with ALA because of it. Um, there's other states doing similar things. And cities. And so cities. It's just all over like the, the game. Yeah. Um, I can tell you that I, um, when I, one of the times I wasn't here, I received a fairly lengthy email from a citizen concerned about that, that this person was identifying themselves as a Marxist and what does the city spend for membership in ALA? <laughs> You know things like that. Um, you know, I. Anyway, it's it's something for people to know. I, I, I think that the 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 president that said that has since written about that and just says, you know, it's those few just don't represent what ALA does at all. You know, ALA has certain missions that you know. So, in some ways, explaining themselves, not necessarily apologizing. Um, but it's just it's just something to know, and, and since I did receive a call from it, I figured the board should know that that's kind of out there. Um, you know, with with the bad stuff that goes on in library land, like censorship and all the things like that, and, and now this is sort of a new thing, and uh, or the latest addition to something that someone's not happy about. But in general, Colorado, I would say Longmont. There, there's not a whole lot of trouble that I've experienced since I've been director. I mean, I've had a couple of book or display challenges since I've been here. Um, certainly, um, in June during Pride Month, I had I had some citizen opinions on things that we were doing, um, and this person also shared that too. Since this person was also identifies as LGBTQ plus, they they spent half of their message talking about Marxism and the other half talking about um, LGBTQ and wondering what we are doing to protect our children. So, you know, that those are some conversations that go on, but knock on wood, you know, there, I think Longmont so far has been pretty a reasonable community, at least from my experience, but there's, you know, they're there, and so it's something to be aware of. and. Um, you know, certainly my standpoint is standing behind our collection development policy, to your point, and our display program policy, and everything that um, ALA does stand for that we also follow, such as intellectual freedom. And, you know, we are here to serve all of Longmont, and I will stand behind that. And so does my staff. Mm -hmm. generally appreciate that it, it, that is a really uh, great point for the sport to, to understand because of what's going on with actually the reaction to it wait library board comments okay. Your next um, I can just have a quick just for fun share um, I was in Indianapolis last week at a national legislative conference so kind of outside of the conference, I went to the Indiana State Library and just like walked around. Um, if folks haven't been there before, they have a lot of really big murals and stained glass and it's, it's a pretty neat place to just kind of walk around and see their collections. Um, but one of the things I saw while I was leaving at the front desk was they have like an Indiana State Library passport and so you can kind of like download it on your phone using a QR code and then they, um, you can like bring up photos. I didn't download the full app, but just from the one pager, um, you can kind of learn about each of the libraries and the different services they have. And um, it, it looks, it just looked really cool and interactive. And so it seems like it'd be a multi-library effort, but maybe it could be done on a smaller scale or, but it just seems like a cool way to kind of interact and learn about libraries, so. That's really cool. I, I spent some time in Indianapolis and Indiana sometimes personally, so it's also yeah. great to know about the state library. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that. I, yeah. 
Yeah. That sounds like a good service project for one of my students. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can email you the flyer, Captain. Okay, any other library board comments? Well, we are next scheduled September 18th, and at this point, uh, 8.31, you can go ahead and join the meeting.